Good morning everyone, how are you all doing? I'm Mystical, and today I'm going to be showing you a few tips and tricks that you may not know about for your Quest 3. A lot of these will also work on the Quest 2 and Quest Pro, so if you have those, you can also try these. Without any further ado, let's jump right into the video. The first tip that we have on our list, you can actually take a screenshot using nothing but a button combination. You don't need to open up any fancy menu or pause your gameplay. You can do it by pressing the Oculus or Meta button, holding it, and then shortly after pressing the trigger. When you press those at the same time, it'll take a screenshot, meaning you don't have to pause your gameplay in order to take a screenshot. Second thing, you can filter between a lot of different things in the top right of your app list. You can filter by installed and uninstalled as well. So if you want to just see all your installed applications, just select installed and all the uninstalled apps will go away. If you ever want to see all of them again or install some of them, you can press on all or uninstalled. Hopefully that helps you out. You can actually charge and play on the Quest 3 at the same time. Now, a lot of people have actually been having issues with this and after searching through Reddit, it seems these issues might be because the Quest isn't getting enough power. It seems the maximum amount of power that the Quest can get is about 18 watts on power delivery, or for some reason 19.5 watts on a 25 watt Samsung charger. So next time you're looking for a power bank, do make sure to take a look at that power delivery standard and see how much it can deliver in order to charge the Quest and play at the same time. Now, if you are charging and playing at the same time, I would highly recommend you get yourself a right angled type C cable. Now, as I know that moving your hands around in VR can get quite immersive and you can totally forget about the dangly wire that's right here. If you hit that connector by accident, well, you can rip out your Type-C port. And we've already seen reports of some fairly not very good things happening with that Type-C port if it is interrupted or attacked in any way. And it's been known to be quite fragile on the older headsets. You just, you don't want that to happen. In case you don't know this already, you can actually stream your gameplay from your Quest wirelessly to other devices. Whether it's streaming to a computer through something like Air Receiver, or you can even stream to oculus.com forward slash cast. This one is entirely free, but if you sign into your Oculus account on your computer, you can actually stream from your headset to that website, and that website works on any other device. That, and of course, the Quest also has Chromecast capability, meaning that if you have a TV that supports Chromecast, you can actually stream to that wirelessly as well. Share your gameplay with everyone around you. Turn on developer settings. This isn't difficult to do, and there's hundreds of tutorials on YouTube on how to do it, and it is very handy, so I do recommend you do that. It unlocks a whole ton more capability abilities on your device. So I would recommend turning that on. Here is one that I was actually recommended in the comment section, and I'm recommending it to you right now as it works. You can override hand tracking frequency on the Quest 3, and it seems to make hand tracking a lot, lot better. To do this, jump into settings, jump into system, then developer, and override hand tracking frequency. Set it to the highest frequency, and all of a sudden, your hand tracking should be a lot more accurate, and drop out a lot less of the time. So in case you're one of those people that uses hand tracking a lot, you might want to try turn this on. You can always turn it off if it drains too much. Here is another setting that you can turn on while we're inside those developer settings. You can also turn off the Guardian on your quest. In case the Guardian is annoying you for whatever reason, if you do want to turn off the Guardian, maybe you feel comfortable in your space, maybe your space is just really small and you don't want that boundary annoying you the whole time, and you feel comfortable enough to the point where you know you're not going to hit anything, you can go into developer options and turn off the Guardian. So, there you go, do that at your own risk. But you can also disable the presence sensor. The presence sensor is that little thing that's inside the headset that knows when the headset is on your face. Sometimes you wanna take off the headset just for a split second. I have noticed that, that if you put the headset down and put it back on too quickly, well, for whatever reason, it just doesn't know what's happening. So turning off that presence sensor is sometimes handy. Maybe you're a game developer, which I guess is why it's on the PC inside Meta Quest Developer Hub. And that is a setting that you can use on MetaQuest Developer Hub to disable that presence sensor and it will stay disabled until you restart the headset. Or, you know, you can just put tape over it. That works too. The phone app for your Quest is actually a lot handier than a lot of people know. For one, you can actually cast directly to the app from 
the quest. And secondly, you can actually use the app in order to launch apps and recenter. This comes in super handy for when I'm showing the headset off to people. I can actually recenter them right there in the app in case they're facing in the wrong direction instead of taking the controllers off of them and holding the button. And I can throw them into any app that they might want to go into. Very, very handy. Airlink, Link, Virtual Desktop, and ALVR. In case you have a PC VR capable PC and want to play PC VR on your Quest, you can actually use all of these applications to stream PC VR to your Quest wirelessly, except for Link. That's wired. Airlink and Link are free. They come with your headset. And so is ALVR. That's a third party application that you can get. Virtual Desktop is paid, but it's my preferred one. It seems to have a lot of settings that you can change right out of the gate. And it seems to be what a lot of people use. So there you go. Those are your options for PC VR streaming. Glasses adjustment and prescription lenses. This is something I always recommend right out of the gate. If you are a person that wears glasses, the Quest 3 does come with glasses adjustment. By pressing these two buttons on the side, you can slide the interface out a little bit. This should give more of a gap between your glasses and the lenses. I personally play on the Quest 3 without my glasses, meaning I'm not getting the full experience, simply because I have scratched the lenses of a headset before, and that is not a risk I'm willing to take again. It's a very expensive one. I actually just got sent these by Vidmo VR, and I'm sure they're going to be great. I've actually been using their prescription lenses on my Quest 2 since basically the week I got it, but I've been absolutely loving those, and they have survived a long, long time with me, but I will be testing them, and I'll tell you more in a future video. You can actually bring your mouse and keyboard into VR. The most popular one is this Logitech keyboard. It seems to be quite difficult to get, but if you have this specific keyboard and a few others, the Quest will actually track the keyboard inside VR. This works sort of like a QR code, you know, as if you were moving a QR code around, so it's not always super accurate, but it does work, and it does give you a keyboard and a mouse inside VR, as well as showing you your hands while you're typing, hopefully making it easier for you to browse the web in VR. Or, I don't know, maybe you're playing some games with it or something. Talking about those mice and keyboards, you also have OTG capability. If you have one of these adapters or something like it, you can plug in any USB device into your Quest. Now, I'm not entirely sure what you guys would be using that for, but I have used it in the past to plug in a wired mouse and keyboard into the Quest. I have also used it to plug in USB sticks and USB hard drives in case, I don't know, you don't want to fill up your storage on your Quest with movies or something. You can get these tiny little USB-C USB sticks that do the job. Now, you will need a file explorer in order to open those. More on that in a little bit. Rechargeable batteries, this is pretty self-explanatory. Put some rechargeable batteries in those controllers. I've found they don't seem to last as long as the Quest 2 ones did, so get yourself a pair of rechargeable batteries and, you know, save on batteries. Developer mode and additional apps. Now, we've talked about this just a little bit earlier, but turn on developer mode and get yourself access to hundreds or maybe even thousands of new apps. The Quest 3 is essentially an Android device. It is literally running Android with a skin on top of it, meaning you can install any Android application you might like onto the Quest, including unofficial app stores made for virtual reality, things like SideQuest. I have a video on that right up here. But once you unlock that, you also unlock access to the Android settings app. This has come in super handy in the past for unlocking permissions, uninstalling apps that for some reason don't want to appear where they're supposed to, or unlocking settings that we maybe shouldn't have access to. You will need an activity launcher in order to launch it though. I will have a video in the future showing you on how to access that app and many other things that you maybe shouldn't necessarily be able to access. But if you have an activity launcher, finding settings on there isn't very difficult. Just like the Android settings app, the Quest 3 can run any Android application you want to put on it. You just want to sideload any old APK onto the Quest and you'll be able to play it right there. Any game, any emulator, anything like that. And a lot of people have been using it for this as it allows you to play that game on a massive display right there in front of you. And who wouldn't want to do that? Along with that, of course, come Android streaming apps, including Steam Link, PlayStation Link, and Xbox Cloud. Cloud gaming. If you get your hands on any of these APKs, you can sideload it to the Quest using something like SideQuest or a file explorer, and you will have access to all of these streaming services right there on device on a massive display in front of you. I have an old video on the Quest 2 right here about that, but it does also work on the Quest 3. This is a fantastic way to play your titles in case someone else is using the TV or something like that. Now, while we're on this topic of emulators and connecting Bluetooth devices, you can also connect Bluetooth gamepads to the Quest. In case you want to play any of those emulators or play on Steam Link or any of the other titles, the 
The Quest supports Bluetooth controllers, and the way you pair them is just like you'd pair a Bluetooth keyboard. You jump into settings, and then pair a new Bluetooth device. It's very simple, and here is another neat little trick. In case you are in any of these so-called 2D apps, and you think the window is just a little bit too small, maybe you would like to make it larger, play on a bigger screen, or read something on a larger screen, you can press this button in the bottom left of your toolbar, and that will move the screen away from you and also allow you to resize it. Talking about SideQuest, it does also give you access to all of these settings that you can change, including your GPU and CPU power state, allowing you to essentially give more power to the CPU and GPU, making your gameplay smoother. It also allows you to increase or decrease the texture size, meaning that things will appear sharper or blurrier. And of course, the blurrier you go, the more FPS you're going to get, and the sharper you go, the less FPS you're going to get. But this is more on the advanced side, and a lot of people don't actually end up touching this. It's there if you want it though, and all you require for that is a PC and developer mode enabled. You can actually get mouth tracking on the Quest 3. I know we're going to the accessory side of things here, but it does work. And just yesterday, by one of my mods on my Discord server, I was sent a new HTC Vive mouth tracker mount for the Quest 3 that they designed. So I was actually gonna make an updated video on how to make the Vive Tracker wireless with the Quest 3 in the near future. But yeah, it does work with the Quest 3 and you can totally have mouth tracking if you get yourself the Vive Facial Tracker. I know a lot of VRChat people enjoy that. And it's a shame that the Quest 3 couldn't come with it built in. Here's an interesting one. You can connect Quest Pro controllers to the Quest 3. In case the Quest Plus controllers aren't enough for you for whatever reason, you can actually take the Quest Pro controllers, I know they cost a lot, but you can connect them to the Quest 3. No occlusion behind your head or anything like that with the Quest Pro controllers because they are inside out tracked. They track themselves with a bunch of cameras and they are also tiny little Android devices. And in case you don't have a VR gaming PC, you can actually get yourself on the PC VR gaming cloud. Something like Plutosphere actually works here. I've got a ton of videos on these in the past, but in case you have good internet and you want to do PC VR cloud gaming, you can actually do that and you can play some PC VR titles without the need for an actual gaming PC. Well, that is going to be it for today's video. Thank you all so much for joining me today. I hope you found out something new and I hope that I could help you out in some way. Let me know which tips and tricks I missed and which ones you would like people to know down in the comment section below. And I'll make sure to pin and heart whatever I think people should know about, as I'm sure I've missed something. Thank you so, so much to all the patrons supporting this channel. You guys are absolutely amazing. Seriously, much love. And thank you so much to anyone else supporting the channel in any way, shape or form. If you guys are not yet part of our Discord, check out the Discord and the Reddit down below and feel free to join in on the discussion on whatever we're talking about. And as usual, if you guys want to be notified of fresh content coming up on the channel, make sure to smack the subscribe button with forehead, dig my bell. And we'll see you again next video. Peace.